This presidential election is about the battle of dynasties. You have the Clinton, you've got the Bushes, and you have the Pauls as well. It's in a Rand Paul following, of course, in his father's footsteps, Ron Paul, and he joins me now. Rand Paul, good to see you. Glad we're with you, Don. So yesterday, President Obama had an emotional plea uh, to the nation about what he wants to do about gun violence. And in response, here is what you tweeted. You said, our founding fathers said Congress would write the laws. I'll fight Obama's executive orders tooth and nail. How are you going to do that? You know, I think all of us have a little bit of that emotion in us that when we see and hear about children being shot at school. I have uh, three kids are now getting older, but I remember dropping them off at school. And I think all of us are emotionally uh, drained by just uh, imagining that happening to our kids. But then we have to think through. I think we all want the same goal. Nobody wants these mass shootings. So I think we start with the same goal. We have to figure out how to get there. But I'm a, a big believer in the fundamentals of the Constitution that one of the fundamental things the Constitution does is it tries to restrain too much power from accumulating in one hand. You're and concerned about the Fourth Amendment when you well, talk about Well, yeah, that. I'm also the Second Amendment, but I'm also concerned that legislation should originate in Congress. And it has nothing to do with President Obama. He and I get along fine, we're in different parties, but it's for any president, Republican, Democrat, even if I were the president, I want that power to be limited because that was part of what our Constitution did. We didn't want to have a king and we said legislation has to originate in Congress. If he wants these new gun laws, he needs to come to Congress with okay. it. Okay. You wouldn't do executive orders if you were the president of the I United States? You would use executive to. orders to legislate. So, the, I mean, you look at this, and you see this. Bush did 291. President Obama has done less than any of the, the you know, last I current was, presidents. I was a pretty big critic of Bush on a lot of these, too. So, so I've been consistent, Republican or Democrat, that uh, really very little should happen through executive orders if it means legislation. So then what do you do when you look at public support? 89% of voters say that they would support background checks for people buying guns and for gun shows online. That's right. what they say. So then what would, you, what would you do if the public wants that? Those are the people who put you in office, right. but you're working with a Congress who says, no, nah, I'm not going to touch it. The first thing you have to do is figure out why are people opposed to it. So you ask someone like me, am I for or against background checks? I'm actually for background checks. So we have them in the vast majority of gun sales. About 90 to 95% of gun sales, depending on the statistics, are done with background checks. What they want to do is have background checks for private sales. So I've got five guns at my house, and you come over to my house, and you're my friend, and I say, you know, you want to buy one of my guns, and you give me $300, and I give you a gun. It's very onerous for me to become a dealer. It's almost impossible for one individual to be a dealer for one gun. But that's what the president said the other day. For one gun, I might have to become a licensed dealer. Or you could say, well, no, no, we don't want him to be a licensed dealer. We just want a background check. How are you going to know that we had this transaction? See, the San Bernardino killers, he went to a friend of his, and he, he got those guns. It was already illegal in California. It's illegal to have a private transfer of guns. He got them, but we have no way of knowing it did it. So if you want to stop it, our fear is you would have to have a gun registry. I don't, I don't recall the president calling for a registry of guns. You're right. You're right. They're calling for a background check. See, the fear is that when you do private transactions, mm -hmm. since you're not, if I'm going to sell you a gun, I'm not a licensed gun dealer, there's no way of knowing when I sell you the gun unless we were to have a registry to make it work. 26 days until the Iowa caucuses. Yesterday you were in New Hampshire. You were meeting with college students. You're going to be in Iowa tomorrow for your birthday. By the way, happy, uh, what Thank is it, you. 35th? 39, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so have you tried to differentiate your ground game from the other places and in, in those two different states? Is it a different strategy? One of our strategies everywhere across the United States is trying to get the youth vote. If you ask people 40 and under, do you think the government went too far collecting all of our phone records and having all that data, that private data about individuals? 83% uh, of people under 40 believe that. You know, I've been a loud voice. I spoke for 10 and a half hours on the Senate floor saying enough's enough. The government's gone too far in collecting our records. So we think the youth vote is open to us and we're working very hard with the youth vote. We think also young people uh, believe the war on drugs has gone too far. They see their, their cousins, their friends, their brothers going to jail for marijuana and minor drug offenses. I also become very aware that there's a racial disparity in the war on drugs and that we think it's an opening because I am for criminal justice form actually to bring new people into the party that haven't previously thought about being Republicans. You have been very vocal about that issue, those issues and, and for, a, for a long time. Um, but if you want to, the youth vote, you should talk to your dad. Your dad had it, he had it locked well. up. What's going on with you? You're younger than him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was the hippest 75 year old man yes, that you'll ever meet. No, I think we still are doing well. I don't think there's evidence that we're not doing well until you have a vote. We've gotten kind of tied up in the whole idea of being led around by the polls. Yeah. But I don't think the polls are very accurate. And the one reason I say that is I've yet to meet a college kid 
who's ever participated in a presidential poll. Yeah. They don't call young people and they don't call people on their cell phones. I want to talk to you about this issue with uh, Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, and the whole Canadian, you know, whether he's a, a U.S. citizen or not, right. or if he, if, he, if he is eligible to be president. What do you think? You know, I think absolutely, without question, he is qualified and eligible to be the Prime Minister of Canada. So not to be president. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's kind of a joke. I mean, the thing is, is, the one thing that I think is striking is you may be aware that some people thought the president wasn't a citizen. Yeah. And this went on and on, and there was an entire movement. And they wanted to maintain that it wasn't partisan, it wasn't racial, it wasn't this, it wasn't that. But then when they actually have someone who was actually born in another country, I haven't heard a peep from yeah. any of the same people. In fact, the people who led the movement are now seem to be completely fine not with someone who actually, as the president, was born here in the United States, someone who actually wasn't born here, not a peep from anybody. So I am the first Republican to say, you know what, there's been a double standard on the whole birth issue. I don't know the answer for Ted Cruz. I think it will be raised, maybe. Before I let you go, I want to ask you about the debate that's coming up. You're on the bubble. And right. you said if you don't make it to that main stage, which you very well may not, that you're not going to participate. How, how does that work? How can you be a voice and run for president if you're not going to participate in a debate? The good news is the last CNN debate about a week ago, we were in the top six, which should put us in the debate. CBS had a poll last week, which put us fifth, one point away from fourth. So we think we're actually moving up in the polls and we will qualify. Really, any of the last month's worth of debates, uh, polls, we should qualify. But if you don't, are you, still, are you going to participate? Yeah, I won't participate in a second tier because, you know, we're a first tier campaign. Right. And if three weeks to go in the campaign... The networks or a Republican Party can say, oh, that's not a viable candidate. What do you think that message sends to the voter? So, so are, you still a, are you still a viable candidate then Absol if you don't? Absolutely. And we'll, we'll make sure that the voters and everybody else knows that we won't be designated a second tier. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. But even if it's not me, I don't think it's fair to put Jeb Bush in the second tier. I don't yeah. think it's fair to put Kasich, a sitting governor, in the second tier. I think really it's unfair for the media to have so much power to decide an election before anybody votes. Yeah. Your birthday's tomorrow, right? Yes. Powerball tonight. Are you going to buy a ticket? Yes. What are you, what are you getting me? What's yeah. my present? <laughs> this is it. Power, I'll Power get you an interview ticket? on CNN. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thanks. It's, and thank you for coming in. Thanks. Best of luck.